Welcome to our third and final day of IMS 2014 from the Hard Rock Hotel here in Ibiza. Uh, we've had another busy day discussing the most important issues across electronic music, uh, from content platforms to ticket sales, festivals to software. We aim to cover every element within the business of electronic music. We met Team Avicii. We're trying to, to keep the ticket price as low as possible, but I mean the cost of putting up a big production in a big venues, it, it's a big difference from putting up a, a show in a club. MK remixed the 2014 IMS anthem produced by Pretty Lights. The thing about this song, it's 72 beats per minute. What I do when it's this tempo, I go backwards. That way I can make the track 124 beats per minute. And Mr. George Clinton was in conversation. This is one thing Barry Gordy told us. If it's a hit, find out what made it a hit. You know, there's something about it that people like. Also on day three, Michael Feiback of Fame House gave an address on technology and music marketing. For the first time in history, the moment is upon us when the ownership of media itself will not be relevant on a mass market scale. The access is everywhere. And just think, streaming revenue is still a tiny piece of the recorded music pie. The next iteration of this revolution will be the emergence of completely new revenue streams for artists and content creators, mainly centered around data. A panel led by the Monegros and Elro family investigated the Spanish underground. Because I'm running, as you say, a night every Thursday, I can guarantee here that I don't make no money. But it makes me pleasure to offer something that I like to my city. And uh, my dream is to leave a legacy to my city about what Paco Suna likes and what Paco Suna can offer to the city. YouTube and the Association for Electronic Music announced their electronic music guide on how to best use the YouTube platform for success. The growing markets like in South America or in Asia, that's still, you know, uh, undiscovered for the dance music. It's, it's there, but it's not very popular yet. And like in South America, the iTunes didn't really happen. The CD market is really bad. So I think with streaming service and promotion there, and also with YouTube uh, being there available so people can listen to our music, although it's not on the radio or in the shops, that's very important for us. A fascinating insight from YouTube on how to reach the biggest audiences, uh, but back now to the Inform MK as he reveals how he approaches a remix. And from this part, I would just kind of go back and forth, not go back to drums and add a clap or hi-hats or go to another keyboard sound. I never really stay on one sound too long or one type of thing. Like, I, wouldn't have, I won't just make a whole drum pattern right now. I build the track like I was DJing. Boy George and Mark Jones were amongst the panel talking about the highs and lows of Wall of Sound's 20 years in dance. Interesting times. <laughs> Certainly was. I don't actually remember much. <laughs> <laughs> Laid eggs on stage. Laid, yeah. She laid an egg for me in yeah. the frying pan on stage. Yeah. And then Mike cooked And it. I cooked them in, in the, the frying pan. He cooked it. Yeah. Yeah. And when you listen to these guys talking about the kind of early rave scene, one of the things that was very significant about that was that it was all connected to personalities. If you think of any of those artists, you know, they had a look, they had a vibe, you knew who they were. And we sort of in an age now where you don't really know who anyone is. And we met the management team behind the global success that is Avicii. We already had a plan going into that kind of provo provocation that we were going to use all that hate and create buzz around what was happening. Within, I think, a few days, we started collecting all the hate posted online and we posted it, reposted it on Avicii's social, like just uncensored and said, you know, check out what the fuss is about and then linked to a SoundCloud mix that put the songs in perspective. You know, surely enough, within a week, that 95% hate turned into 95% love. The visionary partners behind Native Instruments, Daniel Haver and Matty Gallick, discussed their incredible software company and their view of the electronic music scene. We want to help to create new musical genres, but we don't, don't want to dictate what type of music you do with it. What unites us is an interest in the future of sound, and this is what we are there for, and this is what we are working on. But our mission is basically to create the future of sound, but not the future of music. We don't create products with a specific music genre in mind, but with just trying to push the boundaries of sound, and then we leave it up to the musicians to pick it up. And in this case, Skrillex and alike 
picked it up and created something new. If you like it or not, uh, for sure, it's a, it's a great new sound that uh, such tools allow. The iPad is an amazing invention. Uh, we were fascinated by it, and so we felt, okay, what should a DJ product look like um, on a touch interface? And following in the steps of Nile Rogers, Giorgio Moroder, Jean-Michel Jarre, George Clinton was the keynote interview that rounded up the conference. I can follow the map, the trail, right straight through from funk to disco to hip hop, techno, rave, all of it is dance music. This is the 21st century. The electronic age is the new sound. We might as well get used to it. You know, if it makes you shake your booty, it got funk in it. That's the way I look at it, you know, in the I see people dancing, there's some funk somewhere around. <laughs> so it works. So that concludes day three of the IMS 2014. What a few days we've had here in Ibiza. Some fascinating interviews and panels and a brand new venue here at the Hard Rock Hotel on Playa de Bossa. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. From next week, videos of all the panels will be released via internationalmusicsummit.com. See ya.